Hello everyone and welcome to the 2021 Maricopa Open presented by Infinite Discs. Terry Miller, the Disc Golf Guy, bringing you the final round, final few holes taking place out at the Maricopa Meadows course. This is the other course on the other side of town from where you saw the Copper Sky course where we watched Jen and Kat take on the action in first round. But now we're going to bring you the final few holes. We've got a great battle taking place. I was able to catch up with them just to capture the conclusion of the event. And at 485 feet, they start out on, on hole 24. Well, they started on one, but I'm giving you the action as we backtracked and found them on 24. This is Holland Hanley out of California. And she came in with a one under during the opening round, besting Katrina and Jennifer by three strokes. They both came into this round at two over. Holland out in the middle. So Holland currently one under for the round, as is Katrina. So she has held on to her three-stroke advantage she came into this round with. Jennifer Allen falling off the pace just a little bit. And you see other local Sammy Keddington currently knotted up with Jennifer. We watched Katrina a minute ago go out and around. Playing the big Anheuser flex back where Jen and Holly both go off to that right hand side as you hear the cars roaring by. This is Sammy Keddington. Sammy from Chandler, Arizona, so no more than 30 minutes north. <laughs> I was like, it's not going to go that far. Yeah. Uh, those guys were out there. Uh, he had a metal detector I saw earlier when we came through with the MPO division. Digging for gold or something. As I mentioned, it looks like we're going to have a two-person race between Jennifer and Sammy as to which one can finalize themselves on the podium. I don't know if we're going to see too much other shifting uh, between those spots. And Holland and Kat are certainly right in the thick of things as well with just a few holes left to play. Sammy with the Star Wars stamped Discraft disc of sorts. I'm not sure what that was. Good looking approach. Just a little bit right of the pin. And if you haven't seen Holland play before, well, you're not alone. Uh, she just signed up for the PDGA in 2020. Saw that she has a, a very short but very successful run since getting into the PDGA. Her number is 133547. And that's a good approach, just a little bit long. This is only her seventh event, and I feel like even maybe one or two of them that have showed up uh, have been leagues. So uh, has not been playing PDGA disc golf for too long here. And a great approach shot by Cat. And Jen, who's definitely been tentative on the putting green, thinks she's had a little bit of frustration. And it seems like most of the times if she's off, she's been short. So we'll see if she gets a little bit more aggressive. Holland, also short. And just like that, I think we're going to see a little bit of a shift here in the scores. Solid putt for Sammy. That will keep her at the seven over. And also, she's going to pick up a stroke there on Jennifer, who with the bogey will move to eight. Cat's going to gain a stroke. And although par has been 
Uh, very acceptable out on this course. We see a couple bogeys are going to give up a few strokes here. Now we're going to take a look at hole number 25, 431 feet, about 50 feet shorter than the previous hole, and rather than it playing slightly downhill, this one plays up and to the left. That road can certainly come into play, and deep on the right uh, road, or should I say deep road can come into play, and then all along that right-hand side uh, where you see the gravel landscaping, that is also out of bounds. Katz needs to sit, and it just barely pops up and out. So although great distance, Katrina is going to find herself out of bounds. Trying to hunt down Holland, who she's got a two-stroke deficit to. A great control here. Sammy really just putting it right out in the open, exactly where you'd want to be. Big shout out, uh, as we did see the drone preview, Copper Skies drones, thanks to Mike Jewell over at Pin Deep Disc Golf, and all of the Maricopa Meadow drone shots, thanks to Pete Ulibari. Make sure you subscribe to both of their YouTube channels. And a great drive there. Also, right in the center. Thought about possibly flirting with that right side OB, but it very controlled shot right where you want to be. Jen's going to keep it low, little turn. And also, another incredible shot right in the center. I think that's a destroyer by Jen. Sammy just looking to get up and down here. And that's pretty close. Cat will go to just inside the OB sidewalk and gives it a really good run trying to save the par. A little nose up. And you have to be delicate with that approach because... As I mentioned, that gravel area behind the basket is out of bounds. So you don't want to turn one mistake into two or three here. And normally if it's windier out here, that's something Holland here would have to be worried about. Is, you know, possibly lifting or <laughs> as she stares it down, says, don't get up and roll. <laughs> Sometimes... Uh, you just got to tell your disc what to do. It doesn't always listen, believe it or not. Jen with a bid goes past the basket. Another solid putt there by Sammy. Looks like that was a... Fierce that she puts with. And it was tough for me to tell. This might be a swan. Just trying to get a good look at it. Cat looking to just give one stroke, and that's all she does. Gives one back to Holland. And easy cleanup. A little bit of the turbo action there by Jennifer Allen. So just two holes left to play. And we saw the one stroke given up by Holland. And then Cat gives it right back on the following hole. Hole 26. You don't see it here in the preview, but right about here, there is a flag or a stick coming out of the ground, and that is a mandatory. So the players must throw to the left of it, and then you can see the road and this parking area just to the right and behind the basket all out of bounds. So you do have to go to the left of the 
post that is uh, sticking up here in the middle of the fairway. You'll see it in a moment. You can just see the white sign on it there. And <laughs> oh man, go, <laughs> go. She needed a little either less stability or maybe a little bit more power on it to keep that thing turning, but it fades out for her. Now we're seeing a forehand by Holland. Ooh, a slippery. Yeah, watch out for that one. Ooh, gotcha. <laughs> Very different shot landing on top of Sammy's. Jen stop, stop. throwing a mid. It goes out. It flirts with actually <laughs> goes into the OB sidewalk and then rolls back out. So she's going to be safe. Very smooth forehand here by Cat, shot, and puts herself in pretty good position there. All right, so we know one was a soul <laughs> that Sammy had thrown. Uh, quick shout out, uh, of course, Sam and and Chuck, your TDs, but also Hob and Amy Joe, Chris Cobb. I already mentioned Pete and Mike Jewell, along with Gary to the O, who's out here. Gary was able to come in and get some action for us here on Sunday's round. Curtis on Saturday helping out. Uh, she turns and was just getting confirmation from someone else on the card that she felt like she was outside the 10 meters. They agree. This can be dangerous. Yeah, those those branches kind of just coming in right where she would really need to put the disc. So n not a bad play just to set herself right next to the pin. Cat's got a chance to pick up a stroke. So she could be down just two going into the final hole. No, and not going to happen here. So uh, assuming they both are able to tap in, Holland will have the three-stroke advantage she started the day with. Jen proclaiming her being scared of the OB, which I can understand as it's very close behind that pin. Cat did not go out of bounds, but she will bring it in the one meter. And as I said, she's going to be down three strokes, which is how she started the day. In fact, the scores are exactly the same, so they're both even on the day at this point as they came in negative one and plus two respectively. Jen a little off the pace at plus six for the day. And Sammy had started at plus five and now she is at plus seven. So also having a pretty good round out there and beautiful hole number 27. You gotta clear this initial pond and then the fairway gets tighter and tighter as it narrows all the way down, comes down and ultimately pinches into this little triangular corner and that's what we are looking at so Sammy's gonna have the honors she's got one stroke over Jen we'll see if she can hang on we have an eight woman field here during this event I believe the top four will cash and that is picture perfect exactly what you're looking to do maybe be a little bit left just by a few feet that gives you a little bit more option for forehand versus backhand depending on what you like for your approach but that is a really good position to stay in Holland needs to clear the water oh yeah doing so easily keeping it low but easily clearing the water I can't imagine what's going through her mind right now. She's got potentially just a few throws to try and hold off Cat here for a 
really nice win to open up 2021. Jen about the same distance as we saw Holland. Kat's got to keep the pressure on, and she, like the world champ that she is, really good shot. No problem putting herself in really good position. <laughs> and understandably, just looking things down. She's going to double check with her Bushnell, guessing 850. That's not the footage, that's the, the model number, guys. And she's got a maybe a putter of sorts in her hand. She's got two strokes. Or correction, she's got three strokes. I don't, I don't want to short her here. She's got three strokes advantage. Okay, she's safe. Of course, the, the only terrible play here is to find yourself over the fence on the right, OB, or out in the road. But at least if you go out near the road, do it near the basket. That could leave you a very short putt. Sammy also with a big exhale. And you still hear a vehicle of some sort making a noise, but... Uh, I also love to know we saw Jen and Kat during the first round. It seemed like that was pretty well received. We hope that you guys really enjoyed the coverage as Jen pulls that one to the right. Uh, it was a lot of fun having uh, the card mixed up as we did, and I hope you guys uh, enjoy all that. I hope you also enjoy this bonus footage here. This wasn't something we necessarily knew we were going to be able to get, so I wanted to go out and get as much as we could. As soon as the MPO battle uh, finished up, we saw this battle, and I had to come watch the final throws. Oh, perfectly played off the fence. And she'll get one meter in from that. Now is the time. If Holland's got any nerves, she's going to have to suppress them. Oh no. Uh, Jen may have just called that. She said, we're not scared of the OB past the basket at all, huh? In a joking fashion. So clearly, whether that's on her mind or uh, just the entire weight of the situation, but. Sammy under the pin, looking at a tap in birdie. Jen also looking at a tap in par. I, correction, Sammy is there for four, hence a tap in par. Jennifer there for four, a tap in par. Holland, I think, is, is playing her math. Hopefully she's done it all correctly. She thinks that she has the three strokes. So even though Cat is lining up a birdie, Cat will move to plus one. Holland is looking at a bogey, and that might be enough. And tapping in for a bogey, a one over on the round, and then even on the tournament, in unbelievable fashion, Holland Hanley has taken this event down. I'm going to catch up with her in a few moments. She's got some incredible insight. I wish we would have stood next to the road. I'll take the uh, blame on that. But, again, I can't say it enough. Congratulations to you, Holland Hanley. Let's hear from her now, just after she's been crowned champion here at the Maricopa Open. Congratulations. Okay. Okay. I'm the Disc Golf Guy, and that was my video blog. I'm joined now here by Holland Hanley, and that might be the first time I'm saying that, but it's not going to be the last. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. 
45 holes of golf this weekend yeah. and you took it down. Yep. How does that feel? I wasn't, I didn't come in with any expectations this weekend, so I was just excited to be here and to get to play with Pat and Jen. I, I look up to both of them a lot. Um, but it feels really cool. <laughs> you don't get to have any expectations only because you've only been playing, a, you've been a PDGA member for one year. Almost one year, yeah. That's incredible. How in the world do you go from being a non-PDGA member to signing up to now taking down two of the best women in our sport over a, a, a a field that's not just one or two women. We had eight women here this weekend. How do you do that? I mean, I, I practice every week. You know, I'm looking at video of myself throwing constantly, and it's I'm, I'm always just trying to find one little thing to fix. And you know, I can do that every week, every month. It kind of it adds up, and then suddenly you're throwing 350 and putting okay. And so, so we only got to see of the last few holes. So you have to fill us in. What is your strong suit right now? Where do you feel like you excel, or what do you feel like you're really comfortable with, and what do you have dialed in? Um, probably my distance, definitely. Okay. Um, I feel like my my like putter shots have been pretty good, although I didn't really get to use them much with this wind. Um, yeah, I just say distance. I've been working on putting and trying to incorporate the forehands a little bit more. But and it seems like you've kept things very clean, uh, minimizing your mistakes as best as you can. You had what looked like just one or two really bad holes throughout the whole weekend, and in 45 holes of golf, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't really get a ton of practice in. Like, I didn't get to practice Copper Sky hardly at all because of the wind, so I, I was just trying to stay in bounds, and uh, luckily I was enough. Well, we don't see a lot of new women come in and immediately compete the way you have, and you said you look up to Jen and Kat, two of the most decorated women in our sport. What was it like thinking, like, tonight, you're, you you beat two of the best in the world. I know, that's crazy. I'm sure it'll hit me harder later, but um, yeah, it was just a really cool experience. I, I love watching the two of them play. Well, it was uh, incredible for us to be able to see it. Congratulations. Anything you want to say? And and before you say anything, do we have sponsors? Are you looking? Do we need I'm, to give an official shout out? What's going on? I am unsponsored. So. Not for long. <laughs> All right, do you have your eye? You I mean, up? I throw about seven different manufacturers right now, but I do throw a lot of Prodigy, and I throw yep. a lot of Westside, and I throw a lot of Intel. Okay. So, and All right. a little everybody else mixed in there, too. So. Well, clearly an incredible performance here. Congratulations. We look forward to seeing you and talking to you more. Will we see you more in 2021? Um, I'm going to be at Vegas, and then I'll also be at uh, Goat Hill. All so. right. Colin Hanley, your champion here at the Maricopa Open, presented by Infinite Disc. Congratulations. We'll see her more in 2021. Heck yeah, that was awesome. Thanks, Terry.